Hello, my name is Regan Gronk, and I am the Associate Vice Provost and Executive Director for the Center for Teaching and Learning and a Professor of Psychology at Oregon State University. Uh, it is my great pleasure to present to you um, a short presentation on clothing and prejudice. And essentially, what is that link between clothes and prejudice with a, with a focus on implications for African men? My, I'm a social psychologist by training and and much of my research has focused on how does what we wear influence how we are seen? How does it lead to sexism? How does it lead to prejudice? And what I'm fascinated by is the fact that even subtle variations in clothing can make a world of a difference in how we're seen. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of background on why focus on clothing is important, talk about some of what the psychological science knows about clothing in general, and then really hone in on some specific studies that relate to African-American men and clothing, and so we can see what some of the key issues are. The first thing that I'd like to talk about is this quote by, by uh, Mark Twain, where I think Twain captures it nicely, which is clothes make the man. And yep, that's, you know, we can broaden that. Clothes make the person. Uh, and naked people have little or no influence. Clothing goes a long way. Clothing is the first thing that we see when we meet a stranger. And very often our mind quickly makes up a story about who that person is. Now, not that, that's not surprising. This is something that's been done through centuries. If you go back in time, uh, whether you're looking at ancient Chinese costumes or outfits, if you're looking at Indian outfits, as you can see on the right here, uh, what you wore provided a lot of information. And this is one of the key things to keep in mind, is clothing provides information. Back in feudal times, back historically, you could tell the status, the power, the role played by somebody by the types of clothes that they wore. Now, how does that translate and what does that become when we look at it today? Well, here's where we talk about the power of first impressions. Uh, there's an entire subsection of psychology on the, psych the, the social psychology of dress. And what it shows is that at first glance, within literally five to 10 seconds, within five to 10 seconds, we make a form of perception of somebody else. And a lot of that is driven by their clothing. Yes, it's probably driven by their race and their ethnicity and their gender or their gender identity and how they express, but a lot of that is driven by clothing. So much so that early studies show that even if, if a participant watches even 10 seconds of video of somebody without any sound, they will form an idea of who they are. Now, that's the tip of the iceberg when you think about clothing. What you see here are some of the known links between clothing. Uh, I, in the context of the Chinese and the Indians, I mentioned that clothing provides status, uh, but it's much more than that. Uh, research has shown that uh, based on clothing, people form impressions of how approachable somebody is, how attractive somebody is, how conscientious they are, how smart they are, what they do, how competent they are. And what's pretty damaging is, especially in the context of sexism and prejudice, you see the objectification, particularly of women, and prejudice against particularly non-white individuals also because of clothing. So. Why exactly is this? Well, as far as we can tell, as you can see in this slide here, um, clothing very quickly and non-consciously seems to activate a schema. And a schema is a mental model of how we see the world. Um, we see a certain outfit. Let's say we see a lab coat, and immediately we think about doctor. We think about scientist, right? We've got these schemas. Where did these schemas come from? Well, we learn them. We are conditioned, both by our upbringing and our learning, but also conditioning by media, right? We look around at media, most of us by the time we're 18 or 20, we have seen so much media where, where we associate certain clothing with certain kinds of outcomes or behaviors. Now, following through the arrow on the slide here, you see the clothing quickly and non-consciously activates the schema because of conditioning, because of upbringing. Then it leads to the formation of a stereotype. 
and then often comes uh, it connects with implicit or non-conscious biases that people have that then relate to prejudicial behavior. So that's the big picture. Let's get more specific. Uh, in a lot of my research over the years, I try and focus on, I have tried to focus on the role played by clothing. For example, in one study, I wondered, given that clothing can form such a quick impression, what if we put people of different uh, ethnicities into consistent uh, fan wear. So uh, I spent a lot of years in uh, at the University of Wisconsin in Green Bay. Uh, in Wisconsin, a very popular football team actually around the country is the Green Bay Packers. And I wondered if white individuals saw La Latino, Latin American, or African American individuals in Packer wear, by virtue of all being part of the same fan base, would that erase prejudice? So I, sh I, I had Latino men, African American men, and white men all wear uh, Green Bay Packer football uh, t-shirts. And I examined perceptions to try and see if there was a difference. And what I found was that when people saw Latin American men, as featured here on this slide, um, they, in Packer wear, they treated them or viewed them about the same as they would when looking at, at, at white, white American men. There was no prejudice when, when Latin American men wore Packer t-shirts versus a blank white t-shirt. And I should say, what was the comparison here? Looking at a person in a Packer jersey versus a white jersey. Sure enough, uh, white men, whether in a Packer jersey or not, were rated the same. L Latin American men, back of Jersey or not, actually rated the same. No prejudice shown. But African-American men wearing a back of Jersey did not seem to make a difference. They were still viewed a little bit more negatively than white men were viewed. So prejudice, prejudice against African-American men not erased by wearing a, a sports shirt. Uh, would anything else do it? Well, did another study where uh, here in uh, Corvallis, Oregon, is a t-shirt company uh, that the brand name is People of Color. Wonderful shirts. Uh, the t-shirts the actually say People of Color. Um, they have great uh, ethnic pride. Uh, for example, as you can see on the slide right here, on the back of this hoodie is black and brown bodies make up 30% of the U.S. population, yet they account for 60% of the incarcerated population. Is it a coincidence? Very provocative kind of things. Uh, did a study where I, where I looked at would African American men wearing people of color shirts be, be viewed any differently from just wearing plain shirts? Again, found no difference. Uh, African American men, when compared to white men, were always rated more negatively whether or not they were wearing people of color shirts uh, or not. So again, the people of color shirts didn't seem to make a difference. I assumed, I hypothesized, my lab thought maybe this would play up the fact that this is a person of color and, and one could maybe control against those automatic passes. That wasn't the case. Now, moving on, uh, looking at this model, is there anything that seems to make a difference? Well, in one picture study uh, published by uh, Nicol Nicholas Livingston and myself, we actually looked at, well, can an African-American man wearing casual clothing, will be, he be seen differently from when he's wearing formal clothing? We also added, would it make a difference if people first heard then-President Donald Trump talking about African-American men or not. The assumption was much of uh, uh, then-President Trump's rhetoric was very racist. Would people be more prejudiced against African-American men after hearing Trump? And would we be able to reduce that prejudice when they were shown in formal clothing? Trump didn't make a difference, but what we did find was when African-American men were seen in formal clothing, they were rated more positively than when they were seen in casual clothing. So again, one huge uh, significant finding right there. Yes, we could reduce prejudice by changing what the individual wore. 
took this idea and did another study taking that up a notch where here we took African-American men on a soccer team. And we said, based on the other study, we knew that formal clothing should make a difference. So we said, let's compare formal clothing with casual clothing and a third category, African-American men, men wearing clothing showing their uh, success. Uh, I picked members from the uh, University of Wisconsin Green Bay men's soccer team. The soccer team had recently won a, uh, a, 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 a championship. And as you can see in this picture, they had t-shirts that said they were championship winners. The question was, seeing these African-American men showing the evidence of success would that reduce prejudice. Three different categories, three different groups of people watched these, uh, uh, looked at each of these pictures. And what we found was, again, like the previous study, when watching for, uh, African-American men dressed formally, prejudice was reduced. But when, Africa, uh, as compared to looking at African-American men wearing casual clothes, that reduction of prejudice was not was not seen when seeing African American men wearing the championship shirts. Whether African American men wore championship shirts or uh, hoodies and sweatpants, they, there was there was evidence of prejudice against them, and that prejudice was only reduced when those African American men were shown in formal wear. What does this tell us? Well, first off, to conclude, Clothing makes a difference. You can modify how people's uh, impressions of others are formed. Clearly, some races, you can modify these impressions more than other races. As far as African-American men are concerned, uh, the one major factor that seems to make a difference is the formality of wear. In American samples, with African-American men compared uh, shown in formal wear versus shown in informal wear, and when compared to Latino men, Latin American men, or white men, that African-American men were only seen as equivalent on characteristics when they were formally dressed. Does this mean that to reduce prejudice, it's up to the wearer to be dressed formally? I don't think so. I think we've got to be more aware of the fact that these biases exist. And it's good information to know about what formal wear can go, but I do not think this means that we should say, look, if you want to be treated well, you've got to dress up well. We have to treat people equally. What this social psych uh, psychology research suggests is you can tweak how perceptions are made. This is how it does happen naturally and non-consciously. Now we need to work a lot better um, to change it. Thank you.